to get it to IIT, I'm sure you must have experienced it. It's even better to graduate, and I'm sure you'll be experiencing it very soon. But I can bet you, nothing beats getting invited as a speaker. Thank you very much, Aidi Karato. Today we'll be talking about something that's very close to my heart, and I'm really passionate about company in Carbon Clean Solutions that co-founded about three years back. Carbon Clean Solutions is essentially developing a technology that can solve the problem of carbon dioxide. So I'll be telling you more about the technology and innovation that we're working on and how is it going to change the world where we live in. Climate change is a real problem now. The nations and, and, and countries across the world have acknowledged this and what they are moving towards is an action plan either to mitigate or adapt to climate change. You, you can call it because of the industrial revolution, or urbanization, or we adding more and more services to our society. What we have done is now we are adding more than 26 billion tons of carbon dioxide to the delicate atmosphere of Earth on a daily on a yearly basis. And that's not really good news. You know, because this carbon dioxide, when it goes into atmosphere, it triggers in something which is called global warming and which leads to greater effect and consequences. But the global climatic society is pretty confident and they have recently concluded that if we do not stop the emission of this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, it will lead to some irreversible biophysical processes on our earth and the results of food will be really, really bad and fatal for the human beings. So the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is also called IPCC, what they did is they did a small study to understand whether the, you know, whatever CO2 we are putting into atmosphere, is it really going to make any change, is it really, climate change is really happening. And what they concluded at the end was that if we all put in the same amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is called business as usual, we will end up heating the surface temperature of Earth by more than 2 degrees Celsius, or at least by 2 degrees Celsius by the measure. And that's not, that's not really good news for us. Just to give you a perspective, over a period of past 10,000 years, the surface temperature of Earth has changed by plus minus 1 degree Celsius. And if we hit that 2 degrees Celsius, that's really going to be a record. And what will, what will trigger is a lot of ice cap melting. And because of that, there will be flooding. And quite a bit of places that you know today exist will actually become a part of aquatic kingdom. I mean, just imagine the situation you go to uh, your Facebook and update a status going scuba diving to see Gateway in India or Statue of Liberty or some situation like that. So, what should we do? I mean, should we really turn off our lights and really start start to live in jungle or something like that? But I don't think that's a realistic option and I don't think you know, I personally may not do it. So, um, there are quite a bit of options around. You know, there is renewable energy coming up. Uh, there are people who are trying to work with energy efficiency, but all these options really need time to get scaled up. And we are, we are, in, in the best case scenario, we are talking about at least one or two decades till the time our, our, our society as a whole is, is completely driven by renewable energy. So what happens when that kind of really happens? You know, we'll, we'll keep burning carbon, we'll, we'll keep burning the fossil fuels like coal and uh, natural gas and keep producing carbon dioxide. So there needs to be some sustainable solution around that. And what our company is doing is exactly bang right on the point where we are trying to solve the problem of how do we allow the use of coal, natural gas, and other fossil fuels in a sustainable manner so that we have enough time so that our, our society can transform to a more cleaner way of producing energy. Now, there is a, the, the, the concept on which, on what our, our, our company is developing is pretty simple. has been around for quite some time because I've been talking. It's called carbon capture and reuse. You know? And the concept really is that you have carbon dioxide in a mixture of gases which is currently escaping into the atmosphere. So if you really do a good job of separating this carbon dioxide from the flue gases and that economically, and then intelligently use this carbon dioxide in downstream industrial processes, then you have solved a major problem. And that's what we're trying to do. I'll give you an example of how do we do it. Right? Uh, we, have, we have a customer here in South India 
Uh, and using our technology, what they do is they trap the carbon dioxide from the fluid gases which they are putting, in, which they were putting into the atmosphere, and they convert this pure carbon dioxide into a chemical, waste gas, to a chemical. Pretty cool, huh? But and you would say, and you, and, and, and you would say this is a pretty simple job, you know. And I can almost see a few people maybe trying to raise their hand, saying that, hey, you know, I can do it, and I know how to do it. So what is your secret sauce? How is it? You are doing it differently than anybody else who's currently trying to do or trying to work on. Now the secret sauce to the problem and what's the, what's the unique thing about our technology is we capture carbon dioxide at the primes, which makes economic sense. Capturing carbon dioxide has been around for like uh, three decades, 30 years, 35 years. Big companies have worked on it and invested on it. And what these companies have realized is cost is a major barrier in actually capturing all the carbon dioxide which is existing today and reusing it some form or storing it somewhere so that it does not come back to the atmosphere. So how have we actually done it? The, the way or the process which we employ is called, is called, is called, is called uh, a process like ABBS which was born essentially here in IP character. Uh, we started in 2009. Uh, and my own room in Azad was, was our corporate headquarters and my partner for this room was a lab. So it, it was essentially from there we started developing a process which challenged the, the conventional process of trapping CO2 from a gas mixture or from a, uh, from, a, from a flue gas or from a polluted gas that we have. And what we have done over a period of three years is essentially reduce the overall cost of operations by approximately 30% and the cost of capital expense for the process by more than 20%. So what in the end, what you get is essentially capturing carbon dioxide at an uh, economically viable price where it can be used for a certain process downstream and the use of fossil fuels can sustain over a period of time. Now, A lot of uh, issues or questions have been uh, raised whether our company can really do it or not. So, um, when, when our, our team is, is pretty young in the sense that uh, when, when we moved out or graduated from our Karakur, we set up a lab in Bombay and we engaged a few engineers first from Rurki from and uh, in Bombay. And essentially we started developing the process there in, in the lab in Bombay. So a lot of people were, are quite amazed at looking at us saying that you know, you're a bunch of young engineers trying to solve a problem, a lot of global corporations have been solving and this is a space essentially predominantly dominated by a few global agencies. So how's that really really working? And my answer to them always is that all the richness of innovation really comes from not knowing what you really know. You know, I mean, if you really know the answer of all the questions, then there is really no innovation and it becomes boring. So, as a team, we always are in quest of solving a, solution, solving a problem, finding a solution to an existing problem. I mean, carbon dioxide, if you look at, you look at it in this perspective, 26 billion tons, that's a big number. It's a big, prob it's a big problem. But I would say it's also a big opportunity which you and I, are people, or people like us, or companies like ourselves, can really deal with. And if you try and find a solution, you can really do good for the society. And so, <coughs> one of the things that I also wanted to share is that um, is, is more on the company. So, once, once we graduated at a lab in, in Mumbai, then we started uh, working with a few clients. So, currently, over a period of the past three years, today, we operate a commercial scale plant in India, which is first of its kind. And uh, it's, it's because of a, a consistent hard work, we launched our first commercial project uh, last year and it's operating very well. And following that, the British government's Department of Energy and Climate Change gave us an award of 3.5 million pounds, which is an actually <laughs> Which is actually the largest grant the British government has given to a private company for developing carbon capture in the UK. And, it's then, and we are making a few more headways in a similar direction, and we'll come to know about that soon. But all this is essentially happening, and I would also want you to really, really question the 
knowledge that's already existing, really go out and try and find out if you can really change something that's already existed. You know, I mean, um, whatever exists around us, we compare it 10 years back and now, is, has changed a lot. And it's all being changed by people like you and me. They, are, they were no more intelligent like you and me. So, you realistically, for solving the problem, all you need is a drive and will that we can actually solve the problem. Um, that said, coming back, now coming back to uh, carbon capture, uh, I'm, I'm personally very much uh, excited and passionate about technology. Climate change is, is a subject which is very close to my heart. I have uh, represented in the uh, Copenhagen Climate Change Conference and a few more conferences. So I'm very much passionate about technology and climate change, and I personally believe that technology is the driver that brings in change and can solve all the major problems in our lives. And uh, if you really look at our team, uh, my co-founder team, and other people also, they, are, they, they also believe in the same philosophy. And it's in the DNA of our team that not to go with whatever the conventional wisdom is. We try and be challenged. We try and ask questions at every single step that if this is not happening, what's the reason behind this? Why is this not happening? Can we do something else? Can we really change it? So it's really a part of the company DNA that we try and pursue and we try and question every single conventional wisdom that has been existed. There are more than 2 billion poor people on this planet. And the only way, and I, if I also give you an option, to find a way you can really do something about them to bring them out, the, out of their misery and bring them out of their poverty, I'm sure you would really choose an option called energy. But production of energy comes with a few strings attached. It's not free. Right? And as I learned today, about 80% of our energy is created by fossil fuels. So if you want to produce more energy, this will reduce this will result in burning more fossil fuels, which will produce more carbon dioxide, and will further impact the poorest million people. Right? What I wanted to conclude with is that it is, uh, it is my hope that technology like ours, which is in the area of carbon capture, would certainly be able to deal with the imminent problem of climate change and carbon dioxide emissions that our world faces today, modern society faces today. And we will be able to save the poorest 2 billion people on the planet in that way or not. Thank you.